Jackson Hargreaves' arrival at the Intergalactic Academy on Zephar was nothing short of a spectacle. As the first Earthling to be admitted, his entry into the Academy's vast, silver-domed classroom was met with silent stares and hushed whispers. Unlike his new classmates, slender beings from various corners of the galaxy, adorned in shimmering fabrics and glowing appendages, Jackson stood out with his muscular build and plain, functional attire. Welcome, Jackson Hargreave from Earth, announced Professor Lyron, a Tornadian who, despite her ethereal, almost transparent appearance, spoke with an authority that commanded immediate respect. This semester, Jackson will be joining our course on environmental survival. Let us extend our warmest welcomes and show him the unity that defines us. As Jackson made his way to an empty seat, he scanned the room. Eyes of every conceivable shape and color studied him, reflecting a mixture of curiosity and skepticism. He settled down, pulling out a standard-issue holographic notebook, its display flickering to life under his fingertips. Earth, huh? I read it's a Class X death world, whispered a voice next to him. The speaker was a lean Zelforian named Mira, her skin a vibrant shade of green that deepened with her emotions. How does anything survive there? Jackson turned to her with a grin. It's tough, but you get used to it. Keeps you on your toes. The class soon erupted into soft murmurs, the term death world bouncing around the walls. It was a designation given to planets so hostile, survival there was considered nearly impossible for standard galactic life forms. All right, everyone, Professor Liren continued, her tone bringing the room back to order. Today we begin with an overview of survival tactics adapted to various planetary environments. Mr. Hargreave, perhaps you could start us off with some insights into the terrestrial environments of Earth. Stepping up to the holographic projector, Jackson felt a slight thrill. He loaded images of Earth, towering mountains, vast oceans, and dense forests. As the scenes unfolded before the class, a real-time translator conveyed his words into the myriad languages spoken by the students. Earth is home to a wide range of ecosystems, each with its unique challenges, Jackson explained. From our highest peaks, where the air is thin, to our deepest seas that are pitch black and cold, Earth creatures have adapted in incredible ways. He spoke of avalanches in the Himalayas, of hurricanes that battered coastlines, and of deserts so arid that life seemed an impossibility. With each example, the classroom's atmosphere shifted from skepticism to intrigue. To survive on Earth, you learn to respect these forces of nature, he concluded his voice filled with a mix of pride and nostalgia. And perhaps there are things we Earthlings can learn from your worlds as well. The break period was buzzing with activity as a group of students led by the inquisitive Mira gathered around Jackson. Their faces, a mosaic of galactic diversity, were lit with curiosity. The Valerian named Sir, with luminescent blue skin that shimmered slightly as he moved, was the first to break the ice. Jackson, those stories about Earth, do creatures really hunt each other for survival? Sir asked, his voice tinged with disbelief. And you mentioned animals that can devour a being whole. Jackson nodded, amused by their astonished expressions. Oh, absolutely. Earth has predators like sharks, which can grow up to 20 feet long, and lions, kings of our savannas. It's all part of the natural balance. A small group gasped, and whispers ran through the crowd. The idea of such creatures was alien to many of them whose home planets had long since engineered such dangers out of existence. Jackson decided to delve deeper into the tales of Earth, drawing everyone in with vivid descriptions of the Amazon rainforest. Imagine trees so tall that their canopies form a green ceiling. The forest floor is dark, damp, and teeming with life. There are places in the Amazon where no human has ever set foot. And the animals there, he continued, they've adapted to be incredibly resilient like the jaguar which can climb trees and swim in rivers to hunt. He explained how these adaptations were necessary for survival, reflecting on the harsh realities that shaped Earth's biodiversity. Is it not terrifying to live among such creatures? A timid Meldron with four eyes inquired from the back of the group. It can be dangerous, Jackson admitted, but you learn to coexist. Earth teaches you respect for nature and for the delicate balance of life. Our world might be a death world, but it's also filled with beauty and life. The group's awe grew as Jackson shared more about Earth's natural wonders, volcanoes spewing lava, oceans with waves towering like skyscrapers, 
and storms that could change landscapes overnight. Earth sounds like a planet of extremes, Mira commented thoughtfully. It's both terrifying and fascinating. It's all about perspective, Jackson replied with a smile. Every challenge on Earth has taught us something valuable. And I guess standing here among you all, I'm realizing just how much those lessons have shaped me. The fascination with Jackson's tales of Earth did not fade as the days passed. Instead, it grew, stirring a competitive spirit among some of the more adventurous students. One such student was Brax, a towering figure from Caprion, known for its inhabitants' strength and warrior culture. Brax approached Jackson during a practical session in the Academy's extensive training grounds, a hint of challenge in his deep, rumbling voice. Jackson, your stories of Earth intrigue me, Brax began, his arms crossed over his chest, his eyes gleaming with a mix of respect and rivalry. On Caprion, we respect strength and endurance. I propose a test, a survival simulation, to see if your skills match your tales. Jackson looked up at Brax, noting the serious expression on the Caprion's face. I'm here to learn, not to boast, he replied calmly. But I accept your challenge. It'll be a good way to see how Earth techniques stand up to other world strategies. Word of the challenge spread quickly, and excitement buzzed through the academy. The survival simulation was a respected test among the students, designed to mimic some of the harshest environments in the galaxy. It was a test of both physical prowess and intellectual adaptability, often used to settle debates and hone survival skills. The simulation was scheduled for the weekend, giving Jackson just a few days to prepare. As the news reached Professor Liren, she saw it as an excellent teaching opportunity and decided to make it a class event. Let's make it educational, she suggested. Each participant can choose an environment reflective of their homeworld's challenges. It will not only test Jackson, but all who enter. The day of the simulation arrived with a palpable tension in the air. The arena, a massive dome capable of replicating any known environment, was filled with students and faculty eager to witness the challenge. Jackson chose an Earth-like jungle environment, dense and teeming with hidden dangers, while Brax selected the harsh, rocky terrains reminiscent of Caprion's mountainous regions. As the simulation began, the arena transformed. Half became a thick, humid jungle with towering trees and dense undergrowth, and the other half a rugged, mountainous landscape with steep cliffs and scattered boulders. Jackson moved with cautious agility, applying the Earth techniques he had described in his stories. He used vines to create traps and shelters, found food and water sources using signs only Earth-trained eyes could spot, and navigated the terrain with an expert's precision. Brax, on his part, showed formidable strength and endurance, moving large rocks to create shelters and scaling cliffs with ease. However, the Caprion's approach was more about brute force than finesse, which led to a few setbacks, like triggering one of Jackson's simple traps, a pitfall hidden beneath a layer of leaves. As Brax found himself ensnared, the audience gasped, then watched as Jackson approached, extending a hand to help his competitor out of the pit. It's not just about surviving. It's about learning and adapting, Jackson said, pulling Brax up. We can learn a lot from each other. Brax nodded, a broad grin spreading across his face. Indeed, Earthling. I underestimated both you and your homeworld. As the simulation concluded, the onlooker's applause wasn't just for the spectacle. It was for the sportsmanship and skill displayed by Jackson and Brax. The event had started as a challenge, but ended in a demonstration of mutual respect and understanding. The classmates, who had initially viewed Jackson with a mix of curiosity and skepticism, now looked at him with genuine respect. Brax, standing beside Jackson as they exited the simulation arena, was the first to vocalize the sentiment that many felt. I must admit I doubted the stories of Earth's harshness and the strength it imbued in its people, Brax said, clapping a heavy hand on Jackson's shoulder. You've shown not just strength but wisdom in handling the challenges. Earth has taught you well. Jackson smiled, feeling a swell of pride for his home planet. Every world has its dangers, its lessons, he replied. Today we learned from each other, and that's the biggest win we could have hoped for. The buzz continued long after the simulation had ended. Students approached Jackson with questions about Earth, about the strategies he used, and some even about how they could apply those strategies to their own survival training. Jackson found himself at the center of an impromptu exchange of knowledge, where fears and misconceptions about Earth's designation as a death world were replaced with admiration 
and a desire to learn. Professor Liren, observing the interactions, decided to incorporate more of these practical cross-cultural exchanges into the curriculum. This is exactly the kind of learning environment we strive for at the Academy, she noted. Jackson, you and Brax have inspired a new level of engagement in our survival courses. Over the following weeks, Jackson's role at the Academy shifted perceptibly. No longer was he merely a student from a mysterious and dangerous world. He became a mentor and collaborator in the truest sense. His earth-based techniques and strategies were incorporated into the curriculum, and he led several workshops on terrestrial survival skills. The workshops were a hit. Students from planets with less hostile environments were particularly keen to learn how to make natural shelters, identify edible plants, and understand weather patterns, skills that were second nature to Jackson, but novel to many at the academy. Meanwhile, his classmates shared their own knowledge. Mira, the Zelforian who had first approached Jackson with questions, taught him about the bioluminescent signaling techniques used on her water-covered home planet. This method of communication was something entirely new to Jackson, offering him insights into non-verbal visual interactions in dark environments, useful for Earth's deeper oceanic explorations. Another classmate, Tavrel, from the silicon-based planet Silixa, shared methods of mineral analysis and extraction that could prove beneficial for Earth's mining industries. Each exchange was a fusion of perspectives, enriching everyone involved. During these sessions, Jackson noticed a shift in how his peers approached the concept of Earth. Initially viewed with a mix of awe and fear, Earth was now discussed with respect and fascination. Jackson's stories about Earth's wild, untamed nature sparked discussions about biodiversity, ecosystem balance, and environmental conservation, topics that resonated deeply with the Academy's goals of promoting universal ecological stewardship. Professor Liren often attended these workshops, observing the interactions with a pleased expression. Jackson, you've turned your heritage into a bridge, she remarked one day. You've connected disparate worlds through the common thread of survival and adaptation. This is precisely the spirit of discovery and cooperation we aim to foster here. As the semester progressed, Jackson felt a growing sense of accomplishment. He was not only absorbing new knowledge, but also giving back, contributing to a richer, more diverse learning environment. The mutual respect and understanding cultivated through these shared lessons transcended cultural and planetary boundaries, creating a microcosm of harmony and cooperation that was the ideal of the Intergalactic Academy. Jackson's integration into the Academy and the respect he garnered from his peers culminated in an invitation to participate in a panel discussion about integrating traditional knowledge with modern technology and survival strategies. His unique insights and experiences from Earth provided a compelling viewpoint on the adaptability and resilience required to thrive in any environment making him a respected figure not just among his peers, but also in the academic community at the academy.